All right, so we got our final exam Tuesday at uh, 2.30 to 4.30. And then Tuesday evening, we'll try and go at uh, 6.32 for online students. Okay, so uh, 2.30 to 4.30 and then 6.30 will be the deal. I'll, I'll send out a Moodle message on that. Um, what do we got here? Final exam review. All right, so this is online and I've handed it out. Now, what, what you're going to have on this thing is um, a lot of the stuff that we've done since the last midterm. So that would be moment of inertia. Um, just be sure that you can use uh, the tables there on that, okay? On moment of inertia. Um, then we've got the rigid body kinetics that we've been working on, which is really kind of what I call real dynamics. You know, that's again that, that use those of you that are mechanical still take a second class that focuses a lot on that. Okay, so there's three topics: so translation, fixed axis rotation, and general plane motion. So you're going to want to first identify what kind of problem you've got. Okay. So keep that in mind, and then you're going to want to apply the stuff to it that, that works for that particular type of problem. Um, all right, so translation. What, what do you, when we did those translation problems, what were you looking for on those? Well, it's not working too well over there. Okay, let's so see that. Is that work? Translation? Um, something moving across a surface in a straight line, basically, in a parallel kind of motion. No rotation as it moves. I'm sorry, I uh, thought I was projecting there. I'm having some problems here. Am I still? No, there we go. Okay. All right. So translation, what you're looking for there is a couple of things. You're looking for what? Reactions on wheels and tipping or not. Okay. So that's kind of a good cue that you're dealing with a translational problem. And then if you've got translation quite often to answer either of those questions, you'd use uh, that sum of MA equation. So, you know, again, I just want to emphasize on this stuff that you want to identify, what, what you want to do is draw a good free body diagram, because if you can do that properly, the equation will just come right out of it, okay? And then... What you want to do is usually to find whether you've got tipping or not or find reactions, you use that equation right there. Okay. All right, now the other thing is fixed axis rotation. Um, there's kind of a long sequence on that, and you know, they vary a little bit by problem. But usually what you look at there is finding alpha. So you're going to find moment of inertia when you're doing fixed axis rotation for sure. Okay. Find that. Now quite often what you might end up doing is, you know, you're probably going to have to use this transfer axis theorem a bit. Very likely with fixed axis rotation, you'll do this equation here. You, you look at the moments about the axis, okay? And that's got to be IA times alpha. So if the axis is point A, you'd use the moment of inertia about that axis is what you do. Okay? And then uh, once you got alpha, you can find the normal and tangential accelerations. Now that's of the center of gravity is what that is, okay? And then you use the radius distance from the point about which the object rotates to the center of gravity. It's kind of like you're putting the entire object at the center of gravity and analyzing it in that form. 
All right, and then you write up force equations to solve for reactions. I mean, that's, these are some of the things that you end up doing in those types of problems. And then the last thing is general plane motion. If something is rolling or uh, moving freely in space, you uh, you use you, that's general plane motion, and this can have a lot of different variations on it. Um, remember that you have to decide whether the wheel is slipping or not slipping. The general thing to do is rolling without slipping. You make that assumption. Okay, and if that's the case, what you've got is A equals R alpha, or alpha R, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so A is equal to alpha times R. Okay, that's if it rolls without slipping. And then remember, if it's rolling and not slipping, that also means that the force of friction, generally speaking, is not equal to mu Fn, okay? okay. So that's the general rule on that stuff. Um, when you're dealing, so that's wheels that roll with slipping or without. Remember, drive wheels and drag wheels. Drive wheel, the friction acts in the direction of motion. Drag wheels, the friction acts the opposite direction and actually undercuts the wheel. Okay. Um, remember, you work your analysis through the center of gravity is what you do. We had that one problem there with... Um, Oh, we had one in class, and then we had a homework problem. The homework problem was a rod being lifted by that machine. You wanted to find the acceleration of the end of the rod. You had to go through the center of gravity to accomplish that. Okay, And then use relative acceleration to get the acceleration of the rod, end of the rod. Okay. So what you're going to want to do there is identify the problem type first and then analyze it in the proper way. All right. So this is the just some of those review problems I gave you. Um, a strong wind exerts a constant force on a vehicle to the right. What's the largest acceleration the vehicle can have before it tips? What what type of problem is that? That's translation. Okay, remember they tip backwards. They tip away from the acceleration. So what we did there was apply that moment equation about the back wheel because the front wheel is tipping or about to. So how do you represent the front wheel as tipping? What's the numerical thing you do on that to represent that? Yeah, set the normal to zero. Yeah, right. Okay, that's what happens just before it tips. Okay. Okay, here's a bicycle rider. Uh, we want to know the, re the reactions on the wheels. So again, that's translational. Apply this moment equation to it. Okay. Okay, we got a rod rotating around pin A. Um, we want to find the reactions at A. So that's a rotational problem. So what we're doing there is we're finding I sub A. So that's the moment of inertia about point A. And then we're doing sum of MA equals IA alpha to find alpha. Okay, once you got alpha, you can find the tangential acceleration. And if you have omega, you can find the normal acceleration. So there they are. And then you write up force equations in the directions of those two accelerations, normal and tangential. What you're referencing there is the center of gravity. So when, when the equation calls for r, as in alpha r or omega squared r, r is the distance from a to the center of gravity. That's what it is. Okay. This one's kind of a funny one. This is an older problem, too, so I didn't write it up quite the way that I do now. But uh, 
this one it's rotating about point A. So when I analyze it, I've also we've also got this weight hanging from a rope down here. So what I'm doing there essentially is I'm saying, okay, I've got um, the plate with a pivot or a pin joint or a, you know an axle at A, and I want to find those reactions there. I've also got that hanging weight. That one's a lot like the pulley problem where you've got the bucket. You have to handle the pulley and the bucket both. So I did a sum of moments is I alpha plus MAR. That's similar to the sum of uh, MA. I'm having some pen problems here, so I'm just going to take me a little bit. And what? That would be I alpha. Plus, this is that inertial moments equation. That's you know, I, I that's what I'm doing with that equation on the top. But now I'm uh, I didn't write it up in quite that fashion. So if I were to do that today and put the solution that I would work out today, I would have written that equation up like this probably, because that's really what you're doing with this one. So this is like that uh, pulley with a bucket thing, okay? Ah, all right. So that's the equation that I'm applying to get to solve this thing, essentially. I'm just expressing it a little differently there as I write it up here. But it's the same idea as that longer equation below. So I have to handle that hanging weight as a mass times an acceleration. But then I have to match the units of that to the rotation of the plate up above that's rotating about A. So to accomplish that, I add the moment arm to it, okay? You can't just combine I alpha and M A. They don't combine very well. You have to make the units equivalent. So I add a moment arm to that weight. That's what's going on there. Okay. All right, then I've got a, a disc rolling down a ramp with friction. Um, we, we did something quite like that. Uh, I think it was Wednesday or Monday or something like that. I can't remember when we did it. I think it was probably Wednesday. Okay. And then we've also got uh, this spool problem, a different version of that spool problem that you had in your homework. So that's just some review problems. So you're probably going to get one of each type of problem, so just be sure that you can identify them, okay? And then I'll get you a couple other things here too. Um, let's see, tool, pen, text. So the other two things that I'll give you here will be uh, work energy. And then uh, momentum impulse, okay? And nothing real crazy on either of these, just some kind of basic kind of stuff with this, okay? Hmm. Come on, yeah. Stretch out. There we go. Okay, so you're going to have maybe three problems on the rigid body kinetics, and then two problems one on work energy, one on momentum impulse. Okay, so that's what we got going on with this. So I'd be looking at homework problems there. 
and also look at midterm two and then the homework we've been working on since midterm two. Okay. We'll also have moment of inertia in there because you have to use moment of inertia to solve out some of those kinetics problems. Okay. All right, so that's what to expect on this thing. So are there any questions on what could be on it? How many hours is it going to be? It's two hours, right? Yeah, right. It's for the two-hour final. Is it going to be as long as, like, or like double the length? Of the... No, it'll be five problems. So, I don't know. I, I mean, very frankly, I, I don't think it's a real time crunch issue. But, you know, um, sometimes there's people working until the end, but often they're stuck on something and they're, you know, that kind of. I, I think there's plenty of time to, to finish it. Too. If, if, you're, if you're feeling good about it and you're doing okay with it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, why don't we look at a we look at a couple of these solutions for these review problems we've been working on? Um, let's look at this uh, door problem. Okay, so the first thing to do there is to find the moment of inertia. Now, of course, you don't know. The, um, the mass, so you have to write up the moment of inertia as a function of the mass. So it's 5.33 times the mass. Um, let's see, okay. And then you can take the 70 degrees and convert that into radians. That's so 1.22. And then run this equation right here. Solve for alpha. It's... So it's 2.44 radians per second square for alpha. Okay, Are we everybody get there? Anybody have any issues with that? Okay. All right. So that's just some preliminary preliminary stuff to find. Now, once you so if we're good with that, once you got alpha. What you want to do next is to f or, uh, is to find what the mass is. So you know that 30 pounds times 4 feet is the moment you apply, about A. And that should equal that I we just calculated times alpha. So that allows you to find the mass, 9.21 slugs, which is that imperial mass unit. Factor that up by gravity, and remember to use the imperial gravity and you get the weight, and that's 297 pounds. So the door weighs 297 pounds, and we good with that? Okay. All, right. All right. Okay, so now we want to get the tangential and normal acceleration of the door at 70 degrees. So to find the normal acceleration, we want to find omega, so there's a nice equation to do that with. It's one of those constant uh, alpha equations. Plug in the values. So omega squared, it starts from rest, so that's zero. Alpha is 2.44, and theta would be 70 degrees, 1.22 radians. You can find omega. So at 70 degrees, omega go, is at 2.44. And then, uh, yeah. It's not the same as uh, the uh, angular acceleration. Yeah, it is. It, you know, it comes out to be the same as alpha. Um, this problem has some numerical coincidences in it because we're dealing with a one-second time interval. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why some of this stuff happens. So you're right. Omega at 70 degrees is alpha. Now keep in mind that alpha is constant <laughs> throughout the swing of the door. Omega increases. Omega starts at zero, and then it hits a top value of 2.44 at 70 degrees. Okay. 
All right, once you've got omega, you can square it and multiply it by the radius. The radius is two feet. That's the distance from the hinges that we're uh, looking at, I've taken a moment about. They're referencing to, you might say, um, and or what it's rotating about, I guess that'd be a better way to say it. That's the point about which it, things rotate. Um, so the distance from that to the center of gravity is two feet. That's the radius that goes into these formulas. So you get um, AGN is omega squared R and AGT is alpha R. So you're going to get uh, 11.94 feet, feet per second squared. So that's that unit there isn't right. That should be gone right there. That's AGN and AGT is 4.89 feet per second squared. So I got an extra square floating around in there. I shouldn't. Okay. So those are the normal and tangential accelerations. All right. So we're doing all right with that. Okay. And then from there you want to find the dynamic reactions. Okay. So we're good dynamic reactions next. There they are. So FT is NAGT and FN is NAGN. You're taking, uh, you're kind of referencing to the center of gravity there. So for FT, we got 30 pounds plus the reaction at T is the mass times that uh, tangential acceleration, which is 4.89. So RT is 15 pounds, which means 7.5 pounds per hinge. There's two hinges. And that goes inward. And then Fn is MAGN, so the re uh, reaction at N to the left is 9.21 slugs times 11.94 feet per second squared. That's 110 pounds total, so 55 pounds per hinge. Okay. So those are the what I call dynamic reactions. It doesn't really account for the statics type reactions. I, the uh, I separate those. I wouldn't normally, but but here we got that 70 degree angle to deal with. It just kind of complicates things to do them both at once. So I just separate them. You could just add them up if you wanted in a vector fashion to get the total. Okay. So this is the dynamic stuff that we're focusing on here. Okay. We got any questions with that? We're doing all right. Okay. So that's the dynamics part. There's also a bit of statics on this, which you know is uh, not quite germane to what we're doing this in this class. Though of course you know these things always kind of come up. So. So we get on the dynamic stuff. We everybody got that down. Okay. Okay. We're good. All right. So those are the reactions for dynamics and statics. It's a little bit different deal because really you're looking at the z and y directions as they're written up here. So for statics, statics just. I did that. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, here's the statics right there. So MA, I'm using A for the top hinge and B for the bottom hinge. So sum of MA is zero. It would be five times the reaction at B because they're five feet apart. Reaction at B, I'm assuming they're to the right. So that'd be 5RB minus 297 times 2. So what's going on there is we've got um, we've got the weight right there, and that's uh, two ninety seven. And then we've got the two reactions here. 
I'm assuming, I start by assuming they're both to the right. Now they're not. I mean, one comes out to be negative, which is RA. So we end up with RA going the other direction like that. And RA and RB are equal. They're 119 either direction. And then uh, sum of FZ is zero. And that's just the two reactions up minus the weight. Assume that the weight's e equally distributed through the reactions, so they're both half of 297, which last time I checked wasn't 198, it was 148 thereabouts. So it looks like I got a little bust there. Right there, that should be 148. Okay. So we good with that? Any questions on that bit? And then we got that bicycle problem too, but are we we're good? Okay, we're doing all right with that. All right. All right. Um, now the uh, bike is right here. Um, I guess I can type and overwrite this, can I? A little short of space there. Can I get in there? All right, so, so there we go. So there's the three free body diagrams. So everybody good with those? And, and notice, you know, I, I kind of did this with, you know, I kind of thought this through to review some things. You got a drive wheel on the left and a drag wheel on the right. This, this is a pretty standard way to create free body diagrams for these things, okay? Now, of course, every problem's a little different, but, but this is kind of how, how they look generally, okay? So with that drive wheel on the left, you've got an applied moment to, this, to the center axle. And then you've got the friction opposes the moment. It's like if you're trying to spin the wheel and, and, and the ground doesn't like that, so the ground resists that. And as the ground resists the spin of the wheel, it propels you forward. That's what happens with a drive wheel. Okay. And so there has to be some sort of impetus about the axle, some sort of moment applied there. Um, in this case, it's the chain on the sprocket. On We had that spool problem. It was the, un, the, the pulling of the rope on the inner spool was the other one, okay? Both cases, we cause a moment about the sprocket. For the drag wheel, you're just trying to push the... Um, push the wheel across the ground, all right? And so the wheels being, as you try and push it, you know, if you're just trying to push a block, you're gonna have friction pushing back. Same thing with a wheel, but it's, uh, you know, it's a sneakier way to design the wheel because, or the, the object, because you make it round, the friction just undercuts your push, and that's what causes the thing to roll. So when you try and push something, yeah. So with a, a, a drag wheel, you got to push it somehow. There, there's a straight force on the center axle, not a moment, but a straight force, and you're just trying to push it. Okay, and then it gets undercut by the uh, by the force friction. Okay. In both cases, on this one, we did sum of mg is ig alpha. Okay. Now this one was a little bit unique in that it had these the force of the bike on the on the two axles, which made it hard to do a sum of m a down here. Often with these types of problems, it's it can be a good idea to take a moment about that lower point. Now you know not every time, not every problem is the same, but this is a strategy to be thinking about on these because when you do this, you can eliminate the force of friction and just get right to the acceleration at the hub of the wheel. But on this one, I didn't work, so we did some of mg for both of them. And what we got were the force of friction as a function of acceleration. Keep in mind here that the wheel doesn't slip, so we're using that uh, A equals R alpha thing, okay? That allows you to deal with A and alpha as one unknown. And yeah, I was just looking at a thing, uh, actually, I was, when I was grading papers, I put stuff on the internet. And, they were talking about this big old temple they built in uh, 
Oh, it was around the first century. You know, those big uh, kind of Greek temples. I can't remember where the dang thing was at. But uh, they had these big stones, huge stones. They were marble stones. They're making the temple out of marble. And what they ended up doing was building circular. Uh, they, and the quarry was like eight miles from where they're building the temple. So they they made these wooden rollers that were cut out so the large blocks could just be slipped inside the roller. So just kind of slipped these big blocks, got them in the roller somehow, and just pushed them eight miles, and they just rolled the whole way there. So that was pretty good, pretty pretty innovative solution there. Okay, so we do that sum of M equation, sum of moments about the center of gravity, and we get those two relationships. Now keep in mind that these frictions are not equal. Okay, they're different. So the driving friction on the drive wheel is FFB, as I have it written up there, and the uh, undercutting friction on the drag wheel is FFA. So we need one other equation. Now we don't want to deal, you know, we want to keep the stuff we're dealing with down though, because if you generate another equation, but in so doing you pick up an extra variable, you're not doing yourself any good at all. You know, you got to generate an extra equation here um, with the same variables, because we got three variables in our first two equations. That's one too many. So we needed a third equation that would involve the three variables. That way we'd have three equations, three unknowns, and there it is right there. You can just treat the bicycle as one object, put the two frictions on it, and then do sum of F equals MA. And that gets you a third equation. Okay, so between those three equations, you could solve for the frictions and the acceleration. So we good with that? So based on that, you can find the acceleration. And then once you've got the acceleration, you can find the dynamic reactions and check the friction. That would be the last step on this. Okay. Everybody got down what they need from that? Everybody doing all right? Okay, we're good. Looks that way. So there you go. So now we just do a sum of MB is IG alpha. Now the, we're looking at the entire bike now. So we're being very conscious of what object we're looking at when we write this stuff up. So when I go sum of MB, that's about that back wheel. Um, which, no, it's about the front wheel, I think. I hope, anyway. Uh, 883 newtons. Not sure what the heck I did there. What did I do? All right, which one's A and which one's B? So what do we got? We got 0.64 newtons. We got the weight. That's B in the back and A in the front. All right, so I just did a sum of MB equation using the acceleration I found, which was 1.3. These numbers, right? I'm always, yeah, it's 1.3. 1.3 times 0.81, and that gets me the uh, normal reaction there. But then I could check the friction. Okay, so what I'm doing there is I'm doing like a translation analysis right here. Clockwise is positive. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'm, and actually I think I've mixed my variables. This should have been an A here, I believe. Right there. I think I'm screwing up with what I'm calling that. That should have been an A. Okay, that's the problem. I was just kind of wondering about this thing, but yeah, I think, yeah, sum of MA.
All right, so I do that and then I find um, the reaction, the normal on the wheel is what I do. 623, multiply that by the coefficient of friction. There's the maximum possible co uh, frictional force on the back wheel there. And then once I've got that, I look at what I need that friction to be to make the thing accelerate at the 1.3 meters per second squared. And I need it to be 118. That's below the 218. So that's, that's good. That, that works. The wheel won't slip. Now, a common now when I did this uh, equation here, a common assumption that I make is that the wheels are rather light compared to the bike, so I can ignore their alphas, so I can take this to zero. That seems to be a pretty common assumption made when we're doing these translational analyses, so we'll generally stick with that. But just realize, by assuming the wheels are light compared to the bike, that I sub g for the wheels will go down pretty low, so whatever the ig of those wheels are times their alphas will become rather minimal okay just simplifies the analysis a little bit you don't have to include that rotating wheel in there okay so we're doing all right with that okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look over those old midterms in that homework for work energy and basic momentum impulse. So we can handle those. And right off the gate, we're going to do those really well. So we put some points in the bank on the midterm. Then we've got three more problems to do, one of each, translation, fixed axis rotation, and free plane motion. We're going to... Um, we're going to fig look at that. We're going to spend a little bit of time figuring out. Okay, I got translation. I'm going to do that sum of MA equation to find reactions. If it's going to tip, that reaction is going to go to zero, right? The fixed axis rotation is kind of difficult for me to just make a nice little two or three sentence summary of it. You know, I think it's a little tricky, but follow through the flow on that and how you do it. And then the free plane motion when you got wheels. You're going to first draw yourself a nice picture. You're going to put the stuff on the picture. And then without thinking about the stuff on the picture anymore, you're going to write up equations. Your options for equations are sum of M and sum of F. Or you can do the sum of MA equation generally about wherever the friction is. That's the general way. Now, there's always variations on that. Now, the key thing, or this, now with this uh, new stuff, this rigid body kinetics, this, um, you know, stay, stay a little disciplined in what you're doing. Figure out how you're going to approach each problem and approach it that way. And if you got to screw up a couple of times in doing that, that's okay. I'll take a few points off. But if you go off on a tangent and start doing things that don't apply to that method, you're, you're going to, you know, that's not going to go real well, frankly. So, okay. So, you know what I'm saying there? Just stick with the method. Don't, even if you're not entirely 100% sure how to apply it, that's not the issue. You apply it and apply it as best you can. That, that's my advice for the, getting the best results out of this test. The other thing is get that work energy and momentum stuff figured out so you can get some points in the bank on that before you get off to that the new stuff. Okay. Uh, uh, we, we got any questions on this stuff? Anything doing all right? Yeah. The, uh, this, uh, Gyration. What's that called? The radius of gyration. Radius of gyration. It's K. K. So is that? I didn't see that on the formula sheet. Uh, it is. It's just I equals M K squared. I think I it's see. on the back, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I could have overlooked. Yeah, have a look. Yeah, let's be sure. I, I, I'm not 100 percent of that, but I'm pretty sure that's in there. Okay. Under the moment of inertia stuff. And, and the purpose of a radius of gyration is to make things easier. Rather than come up with this complex shape where you're going to do all these calculations, they just say K is such and such. You just square it, multiply it by the mass, and then you're yeah. done. You got it. Is, it. is it on there on the right? I'm not sure. <laughs> on the back? I, I, haven't been, uh, I didn't see it. Well, maybe it's on the front then because the, the back just has the general or the, uh, the formulas for the... Yeah. It's yeah. 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 On the right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's there. And it, it's supposed to make your life easier. That's really what it's supposed yeah. to do. Okay. 
Other questions? Yeah. This, well, we're not going to do calculus on this. Okay. All right. Are we good? Okay. Okay. All right. So there you go. Um,